Good evening traders. Today is Friday, November 25th and markets are closed. Well, 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 what do we have here? Have the bears been banished or is there something waiting for the bulls in the near future? Because I see something that I'm going to share with you. I think there's going to be a big move coming next week and I can see bullish and simultaneously bearish signals and i'm going to show you both sides of the coin today and let you be the judge because i can see both scenarios from a probability perspective equally playing out i suspect right now that vix is either going to have his revenge next week or it's going to plummet to even below the magic 20 number that people talk about Okay, so um, we're going to get into that in today's session, and then I'll let you be the judge. You can leave comments, thoughts, and whatever. I'm open to any of that. Okay, I'm going to show you both sides, the bull and bear case. Okay, but let's uh, start talking about what we have right here on our screen. Today was basically a pullback day, as you see here, but it made a higher low right it's 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 making higher lows and you see here it's wicking up meaning there's buying pressure that's pushing it back up okay and as you see here the headlines down below dow closes more than 150 points higher uh the indexes overall for the week closed higher in the green okay so so far so good at least all right now let's go ahead and get to the weekly scorecard for this week um i ended up being four for four but you know i i i, I want to say that um you know i get monday tuesday wednesday and then today uh, i called it correctly on this morning session i said the vix macd and rsi looks bearish there was bearish divergence in the vix and that did prove to be the case, okay? So, um, you know, let me, uh, let me go ahead and zoom on out of this. And, you know, I'll say it, it doesn't really matter if I'm one for four or four for four, you know, who really cares about the accuracy or, you know, being 100% right, as long as uh, I try to get accurate information out, uh, for you guys to consider that's really all i care about uh i'm not i don't really care if i get 100 percent right <laughs> well i'd like to get 100 percent right but you know uh what matters more is that i get accurate information out so that where possible uh you guys can be on the right side of the trade okay so now um as i've shown in previous videos what i've done actually uh here let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little bit better you know, these first three I put in the background here, that's forest. That's, that's what in the green font, forest, 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 okay? And down here are trees, trees, okay? That's basically just to show you guys uh, the sessions that, um, you know, that allow you to, when you're, when you're thinking about trading in the markets, don't lose sight of the forest from the trees, right? That's the whole, that's the metaphor there. Okay, so um, for you new viewers, please check out these videos that these three that have forest in them. I recommend you, you watch these before you get down to watching the trees because the trees are what I'm about to get into in a few moments, <laughs> okay? Uh, they, it's, but you, you don't wanna lose sight of where you are. In the forest right so it's important to keep the macroscopic uh, uh in 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 mind even though you're you're dealing with microscopic intraday trades okay so um so anyways yep so please check out these other two videos if you'd like to uh get my projections on uh where we are with the relative to the market the true market bottom and uh you won't have to worry about the fomc meeting for another a couple of weeks or so mid-December, okay? Okay, let's first start off with TQQQ for the day. Um, boy, you want the overall trend right here is that, here, let me, let me turn on the laser pointer, okay? Overall trend was the entire day, it basically back-tested. 
it, it it's it it was just a pullback from the previous couple of days rally okay and it did not take the the ema 50 all day see that it stayed under it ema 50 on the five minute chart served as resistance okay but what happened was and, and right now i'm going to make the bull case but i'm going to show you the bear case a little bit later the bull case here is it formed this wedge see that it's forming a wedge and you see the macd is going up you see check in money flows going up you see rsi going up okay this is all in the five minute on the 30 minutes chart you see upward buying pressure on the wicks right here and you see it trying to flatten out on the macd even though it is below the zero line it is trying to flatten out right on the 30 minutes chart rsi you see it going up slightly higher lows down here 65 minute chart same deal look at that you see it you see buying pressure making causing the wicks going up wicks going up on the 65 minute chart you see this it's starting to try to flatten out above the zero line see so that's still bullish okay it's still bullish at this time i'm going to say at this time and look down here it's making higher lows okay okay so um so i kind of glossed over all of this really fast for you newer viewers feel free to look up those videos those two videos that said trees okay um because i you know this was a pretty fast gloss over uh but i go at nausea i've made a much more details uh with a much more examples in the two videos that were labeled trees okay now onward with the bullish case okay before i get to the bearish case okay eoy end of year rally reason number one this is why incentive funding, AKA bonuses. <laughs> okay. You have a month left guys, you fund managers, fund managers, you have one month left to get your bonuses. And what does that mean? You have one month to pump and then dump, right? Pump the markets and then dump it on the dumb money. You, the, the fund managers are considered smart money because they're the ones that are dealing with uh, billions in, in 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 aggregate and the retail is the ones who you the retail investors like uh you know most of us are the ones who when you're not careful you get dumped on right okay so it's the pump and dump incentive funding reason number one reason number two stock buybacks could be accelerating uh, it's not could be they are accelerating uh because <clears throat> because the new tax is set to take effect in 2023 they're like oh well then might as well i'm gonna go ahead and get me some of mine before i have to get taxed on it right so it is accelerating stock buybacks that's in that's been in the news and so right here as you see here let me just kind of zoom in a little bit on that what happens when you decrease the supply because you bought back stocks you go from s to s1 supply goes down but assuming the demand curve doesn't change, anytime supply goes down, price goes from P to P1 up, right? That's how that works. Price goes up because there's less supply of it because they bought it back, right? And so the buybacks obviously favor the executives and that's how they get their bonuses, right? So it's okay. So there you have it. So that was reason number two. Reason number three. Fed minutes show most officials favor slowing Fed rates, right? Okay, this favor, but uh, to me that's a wild card. That's a wild card. We let's wait till December 14th when the next the rate hike decision is made, and then when Jay Powell steps to the mic, that steps to the mic. Okay, that's <clears throat> that's when we're really gonna know what's going on, but. This is end of year rally reason number three. Okay, these are all the reasons <clears throat> to be uh, to be bullish. And I let me see here. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> now, this is more reason to be bullish. This is now the VIX. Okay, let's check this out. This was Wednesday. I showed this in yesterday's video. This is Wednesday. This is today. 
in both cases the net net is what in both cases both days vix failed the five minute ema 50 back test and that is the F full stop it failed it here and on wednesday it failed it here and then it failed it here because now now it served as resistance right it on wednesday it broke through it once broke through it twice failed the back test both times and now it couldn't break through it because it's resistance and now it couldn't even break through down here the sma 20. okay it was everything sort of resistance today what happens as i uh as i speculated this morning that uh the vix was going to lose and i talked about ema 50 at the 2070 level that's exactly what happened i said I think it's going to lose it because I, I noted bearish divergences on the MACD and the RSI, right? I, I, I called that out. <clears throat> and so what happened? VIX started up high, but it was a head fake and it ended up failing. It failed. This, is, this red line here is the 2070 level. It failed. Tried to come back up, was met with resistance, failed again, tried to come back up, failed again. And then it tried to come back up and it failed on the SMA 20. Okay. It was basically kind of a replay of Wednesday in effect. Okay. Now, okay. So because the VIX failed to take back, overtake the EMA 50 on the five minutes chart, it therefore does not have a trend change, right? It failed, not passed same today it failed not passed that's why um the vix didn't surge because it couldn't even overtake the ema 50 on the five minutes chart okay now this is important that i want to call out a lot of people a lot of um uh fellow youtubers that i see constantly talk about vix equals 20 something vix vix to 20 vix to 20 vix to 20 for me, I choose to not look at it in terms of a nominal number, like 20, because you don't know exactly what that number should be. You don't know if it's 20.3. Is it 20.2? Is it 19.9? Is it what? What is it? So you don't know. Nobody knows. So it's that number 20 is still not actionable. It, it just gives you an idea. Okay. So what I propose to you is what is actionable is does the five minute chart on the VIX overtake the EMA 50 on the back test? Yes or no? That is actionable. I postulate that you will have your answer of whether it's 20.2 or this 19.9 or whether it's 20.9, it doesn't matter. You will have the answer to that VIX equals 20.x question. The day or the moment VIX passes the EMA 50 back test, that's when you have your answer, that VIX has turned around and is on a trend change, okay? That's what I propose to you guys. So that's what I mean. Uh, don't look at the VIX as a number, like 20. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll, this next slide I'm going to show you right now is exactly where I where they got the number from. It's right here. So this is the um, this is the daily. This is like January 1st. See that? I just draw that trend line. It's a nice snug fit to where? Look to the far right. And lo and behold, right? Well, gosh darn it, it's 20. Okay. Now, having said that, write this. Check this out. The EMA 50. It has been failing the EMA 50 as of this last green candle. All of this right here is because the EMA 50 has not been recaptured by the VIX. That green candle on this date, which was uh, October, I'm sorry, uh, November 9th, was the last day. Okay, that's why I say I think it's better to focus on 
that the, the moment VIX successfully back tests the EMA 50 and successfully goes up, that's it. That's when it's it's VIX is back. Okay, that's when you'll have your and coincidentally it happens to it might happen to just be and I'm just going to make up a number. Oh, it's 20.1. Now you have your answer. Okay. So that is what I wanted to show you about, uh, you know, how and where they got to the 20 number at. Okay, so what I would like to show you next. So basically, I'm, I was showing you now the bull case, right? I showed you, see, uh, VIX has been unable to take back the EMA50. Uh, on, on the TQQQ side, you see all those wicks up. It looks bullish. There's a lot of buying pressure. It was making higher lows. It looks to be just back testing. But you know that saying? Uh, yeah, but. Now I'm going to get to the but part. The first part of this video, I got to the yeah, but now it's the but okay this is vix four hours chart okay in um in a previous video where um i talk about uh, uh, let me okay these green arrows for the newer viewers i'm just going to call your attention to it under this green arrow green red green red on Wednesday, green, red, green, red. Okay, now that's significant. Green, red, green, red on a four hours chart is significant. Here's what I'm not sure what this green arrow on Wednesday means though. See, you notice I have a down arrow <laughs> and I have an up arrow. The reason why I'm not sure yet is because if if on this four hours chart for VIX, if this guy flattens out, if it flattens out, so we need to wait until Sunday night futures into Monday morning, or possibly even into Tuesday. We need to see some follow through is my point. If on the four hours chart VIX, this thing flattens out, I think this green, red, green, red, big move, is for the upside. Okay, that's what I'm saying. But if it continue, if if the Sunday futures into Monday show continued weakness, because there's there's there, I do see signs of selling pressure on the VIX right here. See that? That's that's look at that wick down. So if there's continued weakness, then this green, red, green, red for VIX will favor the green, the down arrow to the downside, okay? Now, um, for, let me, uh, let me get to the, the, uh, let me see, hold on a second. All this green, red, green, red business for the newer viewers, it's this one. Check out this one in more detail. I go into a lot of details. Big mover patterns right here, okay? Uh, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on this one because, uh, you know, that'll just extend the extend everything out too long. OK, <clears throat> so um, that's what I see in the, the VIX four hour chart. I see a potential for a big move either way. We need to see more follow through is what I'm saying. OK, on the four hours chart either way. So let's jump over the one hour chart for VIX now. This this uh, potentially also gives me <laughs> right here. This is today. Green, red, green, red, green, red. I mean, this is all the one hour's chart. The reason why this gives me pause is because. On that same tutorial video I just showed you that you can please reference point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3. What always happens after point 0.3 when you have the notch? This is VIX, guys. Up. See what I'm saying? And now look at this. Now you have red, green, red, green, right? Red. Something. 
something big is coming. And I think it could be, <laughs> you know, I, I made the bull case and now I'm making the bear case. Now, let me show you, let me show you. Okay, so this is the one hour. See, this, this, this one, two, three pattern looks dangerous. It looks dangerous. I'm going to be honest with you. Because we really, now we're seeing a green, red, green, red from the bottom position on the one hour. And then on the four hour, I could, it's, I could make the argument that it can go either way. So, um, but yet, let's go out to the one day for VIX. The one day, however, look at the MACD. It does look somewhat weak on the one day. See that? It's it looks like it's going further down, right, on the one day. So it's it's almost like, <clears throat> and I'm going to zoom on in. Well, let me get this out of the way. It's just so you can see better. See, this is the weekly. This is the weekly for the VIX. It's coming down into the negative. At what point is it going to pivot to make a higher low from here? To there we don't know we need to wait for follow-through see what I mean so yeah see so I'm making both the bull and the bear it, it <clears throat> it's almost like this formation on the VIX that's happening right now is is oh uh, you know where I'm from we're 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 we get a lot of tornadoes I mean I'm in the Midwest right it's almost like you're starting to see the funnel forming in the clouds. But the tornado, if the, once the tornado touches down, then, then that's full-blown red alert. Okay, it's coming. It's almost like I see, the best metaphor is I see the funnels starting to form in the clouds. But the tornado, I need to see more data before I can declare the tornado has touched down. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope it does. So, uh, okay, so, you know, that's, oops, that's that, that's the VIX. That's what I want to show you about the VIX. NASDAQ, okay. This is a four-hour chart on NASDAQ. See, look at this. This was Wednesday as well, Wednesday. Green, red, green, red. That's this on the this is on the four hours chart. Green, red, green, red from the upper position always means down. The question is, is this the extent it's gonna go down? Or does this down mean further down? Meaning the VIX has woken up. Now, keep this in mind. There's something that tells me there is more further downside. This is the four hours chart. This is the, as of today, it has crossed back over down uh, uh, below the, sig the, the the green signal line. And it's while still over the zero line, true, it has crossed over. Now what we don't know is to what extent this is going to fall before it curls back and hope and ideally it makes a higher low. Does that make sense? Like right here. You know wh where where does it where does it where? We don't know. Okay? Because we want it to make a higher low right there like that we don't want it to do that <laughs> right that's what we don't know okay so this is the nasdaq four hours chart so all, although today the buy made the bullish case earlier you know it held serve you see this buying pressure buying pressure i also made the case that i showed you it looks like vix is forming something right and that's you know, we're getting into like limbo like uh oh uh oh what's happening what's going to happen okay so really the the, the last thing i want to show you is the the nasdaq one hours chart um 
you know, see, and I can make. Okay, so again, the good news is, see where it is in the channel. It's not at the low of the channel. It's it's right there. And on the one hours chart, <clears throat> let's let's. You know, it's it's still, you know, right there, a higher low. Are you going to try to flatten out? What are you going to do? <clears throat> so a lot of questions that we simply will not know until we let futures Sunday night play out into pre-markets Monday morning. Okay. <clears throat> That's kind of where then we'll have a much better idea. But until until that happens, oof, we are. I just feel like right now it's almost a coin toss. What's going to happen next week? But no matter what happens, <clears throat> I think there's a big move coming next week. What I can't say <laughs> if it's up or down. <laughs> so that's kind of where we're at. Okay. Um, so that basically concludes, uh, you know, today's, uh, presentation. If you'd like, you can follow me on Twitter where I have more real time, uh, tweets during the day. And if you liked what you saw, please give it a like, share it with somebody else, subscribe and click to be notified when I release a new video. Okay. And with that, I leave you. With my calling card, Agent 00, out.